Okay, today we're going to do a little experimenting. So there's quite a few foods that we're wondering how they'll turn out in freeze dryer, in the freeze dryer. So we're going to process a whole batch of miscellaneous stuff just to kind of see how things turn out. So this is what we got in this load. And we've seen some of this stuff done, but we've never done it ourselves. So we're going to just kind of play by ear. This first row, oh, let's see if I can get them without tilting. Those are Jolly Ranchers. So we've, if you can see, they're kind of somewhat spaced. Not, not a ton of space, but um, we tried to, you know, just have them so they're not on top of each other. Because from what I've seen, those do expand. So the next one, Gummy Bears. And again, same thing, like we, these do expand, so... It's that combination of trying to get enough on there to make the batch worth it versus not too much that they all go into one big lump. This next one is actually, it's gummy bears. For funsies, we put three mint Oreos on there. I'm just kind of curious how they turn out. So, so just something fun. So we got three mint Oreos on with the gummy bears on that one. And then the next row, so this one, we did cheese sticks, and what I did was I, I just cut them up into little discs, little circles. Um, I'm kind of hoping these turn out kind of like cheese balls, little cheese treats. And then we have some watermelon here, and then we have some grape tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, whatever there. Um, and we just I did puncture these with a knife, just one little puncture. So we'll see how, if that's enough. Um, we just have about eight or 10 tomatoes and a few pieces of watermelon with the cheese. Then, the bottom is all uh, string cheese. So the bottom row is just all. So between the two things, oh, there, piece of hair. Between the two trays, it's one bag of 24 pieces of string cheese. So I kinda wanted to see how, many, how much that makes and how, how many bags it'll fill and things like that as well. So. None of these are frozen, so we're going to go ahead and put it on and start her up. All right, so if you can see here, see if I can get without a glare. We got our Jolly Ranchers, Gummy Bears, Gummy Bears with Oreos. That's our tomatoes and watermelon and cheese, and then the cheese in the very bottom. So we're going to go ahead, click start. It's not frozen, so we close the drain valve. I'm so glad it reminds me, but I have already done that. Okay, we're good to go, so we'll see how these do. Well, this morning, I actually timed this pretty good. If we can get that to show, I came in here to check. Oh, it's gonna be backwards. No! I came in here to check on the freeze dryer three minutes left. I'm, I have to say, I'm actually kind of surprised that this batch took so long because most of it was candy. So the only thing I can think of is like the cheese and the tomatoes, maybe the watermelon might have thrown it off. So that might be a lesson to learn um, to not combine those things because the candy I don't think has a whole lot of moisture in it. Well, gummy bears, maybe. But anyhow, so I'm thinking it was the watermelon, tomatoes, and the cheese that made the extra time so we'll see I'm gonna check it right here and let's see how it did all right this is our candy and test load I've actually never seen what it does when it counts down we come in after the fact all right easy enough so process complete this is the screen I usually see when I come check but it looks like there's our Jolly Ranchers, Gummy Bears. That's the Gummy Bears and Oreos, the tomatoes and the cheese. Let's see how they turn out. So I'm gonna come back here. We're gonna open the valve. Like that. Releasing, I love watching this little line. As the pressure goes out, the, the line gets thinner and thinner. And then you know, when it's a thin line, you can open the door. See how that line just it goes thin, thin, thin. All right, I can probably open the door now. So, 
Let's see how we did. Okay. <laughs> These Jolly Ranchers. Oh, that's stuck. The whole tray is stuck. I can't pull it out. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do there. How the heck? Okay. Well, yeah, that whole tray stuck. So let's try the gummy bears. And the trays are warm. So gummy bears. Oh my goodness. They look like they look like they got some sort of disease. But uh, there's the gummy bears. And come on. And then here is gummy bears and Oreos. Okay, so the Oreo feels pretty much the same. The frosting is still soft. You know what? It's probably because of the fat content. I bet these aren't just, they're just not going to they're not going to freeze dry because look at that that frosting is still soft and it's just, I mean these are oh yeah see that's like melted that's just melted because the trays are kind of warm interesting so Oreos are probably a no-go here we've got oh look at look at these that was the, the these were a couple big cheese sticks that I kept big just out of curiosity and then the little ones here's our watermelon looks pretty dry I've heard these are amazing so let's try them Tomatoes, oh, the tomatoes aren't done. There's still some moisture in them. But I only put a few tomatoes, so I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna worry about running it extra for just these. But I think that's something, having things combined, um, lesson learned, I think you just, I wanna, it's probably better to stay closer to the same water content. Um, and then, the cheese all looks good. It's all dry, so we'll see how easy it is to eat. All right, so we're gonna do a review of this candy. I'm, I'm gonna say a lot of the items that we did in our test run were kind of a bust. Um, it, but learning experience, it was a learning experience, and that's okay, it's okay, and that's why we, I'm glad we did a variety of items in one batch, otherwise I would have been kind of bummed to have a whole batch lost, right? Okay, so let's start with probably the biz, biggest success of the batch, the gummy bears. Look at those, you can, you can kind of tell they're gummy bears, right? Um, now these, we... We needed to run the batch a little longer because they're crunchy, but they're still kind of chewy, uh, which just means they the whole batch, there was a few things like that. They looked crunchy, but then they were still chewy. So this batch needed to be run a little bit longer, but I think these these are fine. Like these turned out just fine. We, we did have some a little close together, but this was probably the biggest success of the batch. Um, then... There was the tomatoes. Um, again, these needed more time. Um, yeah, because they're still chewy. Now, I'm not quite sold on the tomatoes. I guess for me, i got to think of a use for them, to reconstitute them, or I guess if you really like tomatoes, you can snack them. I like fresh garden ones, fresh out of the garden. And actually, ooh, I might do that this this summer, slice some fresh, gar fresh garden tomatoes, slice them, and freeze dry them so they're like chips almost. Ooh, I bet that'd be really good. But uh, these, just like the sugar off of the, um, what was it? They had, oh, the, the mandarin oranges had all the sugar bubbles come out of it. The tomatoes had that too, and I just did one little slit, so these might need to be, maybe if they got cut in half, they might be a little better. Um... So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, the watermelon was clearly not done enough. Like, look how it's like spongy. It's, it's spongy. It felt, it felt pretty dry when I checked it in the machine and in the video. It's funny because I looked back at the video and I was like, what the heck? Those looked pretty dry. But, and, and it has been out in the air, so I don't know if it's just absorbed the moisture or what, but it's like spongy now. It's not dry at all. So these definitely need more time. Now, flavor-wise, we did try a few of these. I think the watermelon, this, I think these are just going to come down to how good the watermelon is before you freeze dry it. 
This, it's like the watermelon was overripe, and so it was a little too sweet, and it was kind of like that before we freeze dried it. So it's not, it, it just intensified it a little bit. I can see how people like these. If you really love watermelon, you probably would like these, but definitely they needed more time. Um, the, I, I got them all in a bowl here, so they're getting stuck together. So the cheese sticks, that was a bus. Don't do cheese sticks. Don't waste your money. That was a total bummer. I really had high hopes. I thought cheese sticks, they might turn out like cheese puffs or be so good. They are hard as a rock. They're just, yeah, they're no good. They don't taste good and they're, they're hard as a rock. No good, unfortunately. The Oreos. Oh, my Oreos and my my uh, Jolly Ranchers are sticking together. So, Oreos, another bust. Um, I think just the thing is, the fat content in the frosting, these are mint Oreos, but I think the fat content in the frosting doesn't do anything. But even the cookie, if anything, they're like more soft. It's, it's almost like they're more moist now than they were one of the few times you can say that word and not creep people out. But they are, they're like, they're soft. They're, they're not like, they were a crisp, good cookie when I put them in and now they're not. So, eh, don't do Oreos. I was just kind of curious how they would turn out. Okay, um, these Jolly Ranchers are totally sticking together. Okay, again, and they stuck to the Oreo. I'll try and hide the Oreo stuff. The Jolly Ranchers, this is, I mean, yeah. So here's the thing. Again, these needed more time. There's potential here. Now, we did them whole. We didn't cut them. Definitely, I think you need to cut them in half. I'm not quite sure how because they're Jolly Ranchers. Um, unless you just break them, break them up. But so I've seen people use like cigar cutters or like, um, it was like even garden clipper or something, little pruners they bought to cut Jolly Ranchers. Um, we may look into that. I don't know if it's worth it, <laughs> but let me tell you, these, and like, if you can see them, they're super sticky, which is part of it. I think they need, they need longer time. Um, normally you suck on a Jolly Rancher and you're getting that that whole Jolly Rancher over like the sugar and stuff off it, you're getting that over like a half hour's worth of time, right? 15 minutes, however long it takes you to suck on that Jolly Rancher, you're getting that sugar slowly. Not with these. It's like, it's like a sugar slap in the face. I mean, you take one bite of these, these freeze dried Jolly Ranchers and whoo, if you need a sugar high, you take a bite of these because it's that 30 minutes of sugar all in two seconds. Um, they're super strong flavor. It's kind of like Pop Rocks without the, the fizz. So think of it kind of like eating Pop Rocks without the fizz, but it like a hundred times the flavor. <laughs> These are pretty strong. Um, and yeah, woo. Um, it doesn't even take that much. And I feel like I've been second on Jelly Rancher for quite a few minutes with the amount of flavor. Um, yeah. So these have potential. They definitely need more time and they need to be cut in half. So that's what we got from our experimental batch. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And be sure to head over to our Facebook group, Freeze Drying Adventures with What88, to see more posts and information. So let me see. I just shot or I just shot Jolly Ranchers up into my hair. Oh.